Hello everyone, this is DA from e Academy, and today this video is about decomposition theorem in Hilbert space or the annihilator theorems or theorems related to annihilators. So the statement of the theorem is if we have an inner product space and we have a subspace of that inner product space that is A then there is a non-zero vector let's say z in that inner product space v such that this z the vector of v or the element of v is perpendicular to that subspace the complete subspace of the inner product space v again the statement of the theorem is that if we have a inner product space and we have a complete subspace of that inner product space then the claim is that we have a non-zero vector in V let's say we have Z a vector or the element in V such that this is the property of that element so we're looking for this type of element in V that have this relation with A so let's start the proof so if A was the complete it is given that a is a complete subspace of inner product space v so the possibility is that a can be equal to that inner product space a that is a complete subspace of v so there is a possibility that maybe a is v if this happens then this implies that that there is only a zero vector or the zero element in V such that 0 is perpendicular to A. So if this is true then this implies this thing but we are looking for a non-zero vector in this uh, in this inner product space V. So we have to consider the situation where A is not equal to V. Then we can proceed the proof. So let A is not we and in the previous video of about minimizing vector we have the statement that if we take an element from v not from a if we take an element v not from a then we have proved that there exists an element a unique element in a such that the norm of the difference of that element is equal to the infimum of the norm of the difference of every element in A with that specific element that was taken from V but not from A. So we'll use this, we'll use this thing, we'll use the minimizing vector theorem to prove today's theorem. So let put Z is equal to X minus Y. So if we put z is equal to x minus y, now the target is to show that z is z is perpendicular to a, or we can also say that the target is to show that to show that z and y one is equal to zero because y one I'm saying that I'm taking an arbitrary element from a where y1 is an arbitrary element from a if it is true if it is true for all elements of a then this we can say that we are going to prove this thing or this thing because have the same meaning here y1 was taken as a random element of a so if we suppose that that norm of that random element of a is 1 this is true if it is without loss of generality we can say that every element of A has norm 1 and if we have any element in A that has norm not equal to 1 then we can put that element that Y1 is norm divided by the norm of Y so we can put that element equal to this thing to making its norm equal to 1 and now taking a scalar any scalar element alpha we can write as 
the definition of the norm square be because this thing is equal to z minus alpha y1 and the inner product of this thing with itself and this thing is equal to the inner product of z with itself and the inner product of z with alpha y1 then the inner product of alpha y1 with z and in the end we have the inner product of minus alpha y1 with itself so this thing is equal to this norm squared of z and, and because alpha is on the second position so if we are going to extract this alpha out so this is minus alpha bar and then z y1 and from here we have minus alpha the inner pr product of y1 and z and from here we have plus alpha and alpha bar inner product of y1 with y1 because we have assumed that that y1 a have a norm 1 so this is equal to this whole thing is equal to the norm squared of y1 the norm squared of y1 so this is equal to 1 because we have assumed that the norm of y1 is equal to 1 so now putting the value 1 here so we can only have alpha and alpha bar and we know that this thing now equals to this is as it is and this is minus z y1 the inner product of the magnitude square and plus the inner product of z with y1 minus alpha squared and this is the compact form of this thing why we're using this thing in order to make some decisions about this term specifically so because alpha is a random scalar so alpha can be anything so let's assume a value of alpha if it is equal to z y1 the inner product of z and y1 then what will be this statement then so here z and y1 so this z and y1 minus alpha that is z y1 will be equal to zero so we have this thing left with and this thing so we have two elements left here and we know that this thing if we're putting alpha is is this thing here then this is less than less than mod of z squared because we're subtracting something that is positive from this thing so that is why this whole thing is less than this norm of z squared as z was equal to z is equal to x minus y and if i'm going to find the value of z minus alpha y1 so i'm going to substitute this value x minus y minus alpha y1 here because y is a random element of a and alpha is a scalar y1 is a also a random element of a so because a is a subspace this is also an element of of a and if i'm taking minus common from this we get a y plus alpha y1 and because this whole element because this whole thing y plus alpha y1 is an element of a as well so we can substitute any element of a at this place so x minus y2 so let this is equal to x minus y2 where y2 is an also element of a so we have the new value of z minus alpha y1 that is equal to x minus y2 and what is y2 y2 is again equal to y plus alpha y1 that is a member of a so now we have an important relation of this thing with this thing as that norm z squared is is greater than this whole thing but what is the norm z squared norm of z what is the value of z z was equal to x minus y so we can write the value here this is equal to norm of x minus y whole squared so now we're going to make the relation of this thing now taking this thing as the starting element that this is equal to we're just writing the definition of z 
and this is less than or equal to the norm of z minus alpha y1 this is by definition true and by the above argument this is less than the norm of z squared minus x and y1 right this and this is eventually the, this this thing that norm of z squared minus z y1 so we have z y1 and because this is less than norm of z squared we're starting from here this is equal to this thing less than this thing and this is less than this element and this is eventually less than this element so what is the main element that is under target is this element that norm of z squared minus z alpha y1 is less than norm of z squared and is also greater than norm of z squared and if it is bounded above and bounded below by z squared then it is eventually equal to z squared so this whole thing implies that norm of z squared is equal to norm of z squared minus z and y1 and this thing because uh, we can move this thing equality on the other side of the equality so we have this is equal to zero so zero is equal to the magnitude of the inner product of z with y1 so this thing implies that z and y1 are perpendicular to each other where y1 is an element of a so y1 was a random element of a so this is true for all elements of a and we have proved that z is a perpendicular element or z is perpendicular to a and z is the element of v that is perpendicular to it that is a non-zero element and we have substituted z is equal to x minus y using the minimizing vector theorem and using the definition of the inner product and the norm by taking the general argument of the y1 the element of y the element of a the norm of element of a is equal to 1 so this is the theorem that if we have an inner product space and we have a complete subspace of that inner product space then we can find a non zero vector in that v if that non zero vector is perpendicular to that complete subspace so this is what i'm looking for most of the videos and you can subscribe to this channel you know to watch more upcoming videos we'll meet in the next video till then take care goodbye